Fall Trades, and this is the pre-watch thoughts for The Hurt Locker. So I'm not a huge fan of war movies. I mostly enjoyed Hacksaw Ridge, but its problems weren't because it was a war movie. I've never been able to sit through Black Hawk Down because it is too intense for me. I get the feeling that this movie is going to be more Black Hawk Down than Hacksaw Ridge. I know this is a major award winner, possibly because it doesn't shy away from the danger and intensity of war. Catherine Bigelow does serious narrative depictions of real-world events on a regular basis, recently having come out with Detroit. Before The Hurt Locker, though, she was most well-known for Point Break, obviously not something very serious. Mark Bowl Bowl wrote this and worked with Bidolo on Detroit and Zero Dark Thirty. It seems these two decided they were a good team after The Hurt Locker did so well, critically, because they seem to work together a lot after it. Both of these creators are completely new to me so I don't know much what to expect from them. Starring in this movie are Jeremy Renner, whom I only know as Hawkeye, and Hansel from the Hansel and Gretel movie, and Anthony Mackie, who most people know as Falcon, but whom I recently saw and much disliked his character, not his acting, in Million Dollar Baby. Also in The Hurt Locker are Guy Pierce, who always amazes me, and hey, it's another MCU actor, and Ray Fiennes, who can be good or horrible, depending on the movie. I'm just so ready for it to be too intense for me. post-view review for The Hurt Locker. Okay, I can see why this movie won Best Picture, and thank God it won over the stupid, cliche-filled Avatar. What's funny is that Cameron is Bigelow's ex-husband and wanted her to mate The Hurt Locker. When they were both up for the Oscar, he said there was no way she wasn't going to win. The Hurt Locker is hyper-realistic, but still follows a clear story. The performances are amazing. The intensity is well done. I still don't don't like shaky cam, but The Hurt Locker is a great examination of a not often seen aspect of modern warfare in movies and a wonderful depiction of a character. Renner was great. Mackie also did a really good job. And I know now there are so many MCU jokes floating around out there because Renner is Hawkeye and Mackie is Falcon and Pierce is Killian and Lily is Wasp, but none of these people deserve to be trapped by those roles. For one thing, they all do a great job in The Hurt Locker. I like the vignettes with David Morse and Ray Fiennes. I was especially impressed with Renner and Mackie. They have the biggest roles, but they are bringing a lot to them them at the same time. Renner's character is often so terse and laid back, but inside there's a lot going on and Renner conveys all of that. Mackie's character is friendly but likes to play it safe. Against James seemingly laissez-faire attitude, he gets more and more tense throughout the movie. This interplay is actually really interesting and gives a kind of poignant answer to what kind of person may be the most successful at handling modern warfare, despite first impressions. And with the question, is the kind of person can ha what the fuck am I saying there? And with that question, is the kind of person that can handle modern warfare really all that mentally stable? Renner and Mackie bring all of this to life on screen. The sniper sequence was so intense and interesting. This movie wasn't balls to the wall intense like Black Hawk Down. It's more of a quiet intensity. It's interesting to note that the insidiousness of IEDs is that often a soldier won't even see their enemy. They may not be around at all. Bombs, to me at least, are far more frightening than a person with a firearm intent on killing other people. Why? Well, there are a lot of ways a normal citizen can deal with the latter situation. But a bomb? What can I do to protect myself from a bomb? Really? I may not even know it's there before it's too late. I think this is a really good focus for a war movie because we see 
see a lot with infantry, sailors, or aviation, but seeing someone have to deal with an enemy that's just left them a bomb to stumble upon is a rare topic. The tone of quiet intensity throughout the Hurt Locker feeds into this focus. At first, when it came to the sniper scene, I wondered what its purpose in the Hurt Locker was. It feeds into the quiet intensity quite well, but it stands out as being different. But upon further reflection, I realized that the scene still feeds into the theme of the unseen enemy. Unlike bombs, though, there is no clear point as to when the danger has passed, which is why they have to sit there for so long. They do not know if they are safe. It's as if we needed to see other ways a hidden enemy could affect things for our characters. It fits, but could be considered a little clunky, and part of the reason it stands out is its extra intensity draws more attention to the scene. My only problem with the Hurt Locker was the lack of stabilization for the cameras. Classic Hollywood filmmakers would kill for the steady cam, but we're just going to shun that innovation whenever it suits us. Listen, I understand that sometimes you want something more raw than what our current tech is capable of, but we still need to be able to see the fucking movie. In the Hurt Locker and in many other films, the use of shaky cam is used to signify chaos. I get that. That. I understand it as an artistic choice. However, film is still partly a visual medium. We still need to be able to see what is happening to understand the story being told. A small amount of shaky cam is completely acceptable. The sniper scene is the one where it really shouldn't be used because the stillness of the sequence is so pivotal. This is mostly just a personal gripe against shaky cam that I'm bringing up in this review view because it exists in the Hurt Locker. Bigelow didn't overdo it in my opinion, it's just that I don't like it. But despite that, the Hurt Locker is amazing and definitely deserved the awards it won. I'm not going to allow my personal preferences on camera choice affect the rating of the Hurt Locker, mostly because it is almost an irrational knee-jerk response for me. Now I'm going to talk spoilers, so skip ahead to get my rating. <laughs> I will admit that as soon as I saw Pierce in the beginning, I knew he was going to die, like immediately, because he wasn't in any of the trailers or on any of the posters I saw. At the time this movie came out, he was one of the biggest stars. Is it some kind of need of Bigelow's to kill famous British actors? Because she killed Pierce and Fines. Now, Fines wasn't playing an American, but Pierce was, and I know I have had complaints in the past about American characters characters being played by British people, but Pierce has been playing Americans for so long that it isn't noticeable anymore. In fact, now it's weird when he doesn't play an American. Same is true for Christian Bale, actually, but I digress. Here, in his very brief part, he does as well as he always has, which is unsurprising. James cares so much about the people in Iraq, more than the other soldiers or his team members, which is why he tries tries to disarm every IED instead of just detonating them. He really doesn't want anyone to die. He tries so hard, and when he finally can't do it, you can see quite clearly what drives him. It's the moment of the Hurt Locker where James finally loses his cool. Not in an angry way, but his emotions are playing on his face when he realizes he can't help this person. James is actually a very good depiction of an adrenaline junkie. The need to stay in combat zones, the addiction it can create, is dangerous. It's why James goes back in the end. Him shopping for groceries, trying to choose a cereal, and seeing how mundane that is compared to all the intense things we saw before is very important. Yes, choosing a cereal is not that important when you compare it to people dying in the Middle East. Both our military personnel, the enemy combatants, and the civilians there. I don't think it is just the addiction to war that sends him back. I think that's part of it. I think 
think James also goes bad because he saw what he was doing as important. I understand that. I mentioned before the quiet intensity of both The Hurt Locker as a film and its subject of IEDs before, and I feel like the scene where the three of them go looking for the bomber is interesting. At first thought, I believed it was off focus. But then I realized, no, it's perfect. James is intent on finally catching one of these enemies that set off a bomb, but it has them somewhat out of their depth. It's not really their job to chase down the bomber, it's their job to neutralize the bombs. As such, it doesn't go well for them. But James's desire to do so anyway is more development of his character and how he feels about what he's doing. He wants to accomplish even more. I really liked The Hurt Locker. It's not an easy movie to watch. It's not a, hey, I've had a long day at work and would like to unwind kind of film. It's one you have to prepare yourself mentally to watch. It may be one that you never watch again. Most really good movies, the perfect or nearly perfect ones, are very painful to experience. They bring us to something real and uncomfortable, subjects we'd rather not dwell on. That is why The Hurt Locker won an Oscar for Best Picture. For once in their decades-long existence, they got it right. They don't always. More often, they don't. If you have anxiety problems, The Hurt Locker could be too much for you. It is a very hard movie to sit through, and I can't imagine how it must have felt in the theater, because I needed breaks. But despite that, and my hatred of shaky cam, I still give The Hurt Locker a 10 out of 10. This is an amazing movie with a lot of deep thoughts. The Hurt Locker, worth the pain. This was Post View Review, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share, subscribe, click that bell, leave a comment below, visit my blog at empatheticwriter.wordpress.com, and follow me on Patreon for exclusive content and a shout out on a video. Merch, 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 yeah. Check out my new shop at cafepress.com slash alexvaltrades for all kinds of products with my face on them.